Rose Capetta, and I am the author of Echo After Echo. The first memory I have of writing is in third grade. I had a teacher who was obsessed with fantasy worlds and she made our entire classroom into a fantasy kingdom. And she would always have us do these prompts where we would write about um, like knights and castles and fantasy places. And I was so in love with this. So every week we would do a different prompt. And I was just having way too much fun, like putting every adjective I could think of into the prompt. <laughs> but I fell in love with writing those stories. And then I kept trying to write them on my own you know, in my notebooks, and, and it just sort of grew from there. I became completely um, in love with it, so. I am most proud of the love story in it. Um, I feel like it was, in some ways, the part of the book that I needed to write the most. Everything else was really fun and I loved adding the theater aspects and um, the murder mystery was so much fun to figure out and, and was a big writing challenge, but the love story is what I am the most proud of because I needed to tell that part the most and the idea that it's going to be out there in the world is kind of huge to me. The perfect reader for this book is someone who is interested in being transported to um, <laughs> this this theatrical world. It's a very like dramatic and um, and intense sort of um, place. This the Aurelia Theater is where the the story takes place, and it's kind of this world of the story. And I feel like um, I had so much fun creating that that world and doing all of the um, the research into that. And I have a theater background. And so getting to put all of that together. So you don't have to be a theater person to get into it, but to just sort of, I, I feel like the setting is so much of what makes it exciting to me. And um, I think that anyone who likes a good mystery also, because I was a huge mystery reader as a teenager. Like I would just devour mystery books. And I feel like getting all those twisty bits and like all of the, the red herrings and the reveals and stuff like that and that was all really fun to put together so don't um if you're saving something for later do it now <laughs> whether it's in writing whether it's you're saving a plot point for later in your story that's usually a sign that you need to write it now. If you are saving something in your life to do later, if you're if you're saying I want to go and, you know, try to be this someday, try it now. If you want to I mean sometimes it does take a certain amount of working up to it. I, I definitely had to work for a long time to become an author. It's not something that happened overnight, but if I had thought, you know, I'll I'll do that someday, I feel like it would have if I, had, if I had sort of delayed starting, it still would have taken even longer. So I feel like you just throw yourself headfirst into the thing that you're saving for later. <laughs> I do think that one of the most memorable th responses that I've had to my work was from Miriam, my editor on, on Echo After Echo, because I wrote this book thinking it was just for me. I wrote this book, I, I have books that are that are out and I was I was proud of those books but this is something completely different and it is something that I was really worried that it was something that was only going to be for me and not that that would be a problem you know sometimes we tell stories because they're just what we need um, but I wanted to believe that it could connect to readers I wanted to believe that there were readers out there who needed the story as much as I did and to have someone come back and say yes this is something I connect to this is something that I see other people connecting to that 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 other readers are going to need it just meant so much to me because I sat there every day writing it and thinking you know I just have to keep going I, I, I literally can't stop writing this story I don't know <laughs> if, if it's ever going to have that moment, if it's ever going to have that person who, who sits down and reads it and thinks, yes. So that was really amazing. Theaters are very beautiful places, but that beauty can very easily 
I think anything that's very beautiful can easily turn ominous if you put it in a different light. Also, it gives you a really great cast of characters to play with for a murder mystery. <laughs> you know, you get to sit down and be like, and, and think about all the people who work in the theater and, and their parts in the mystery. And it kind of, in a very sort of like, almost going back to Agatha Christie style, where you have like the big cast of characters and who's, you know, who did what and, and how they all play into the mystery. Because when you write one, you think that it's one big mystery, but it's actually like a ton of little mysteries that interlock. So finding, you know, this actor over here has their own secret and this lighting designer has her secret and everybody has, and it all sort of fits together like within, the, within that setting. I think a lot of mysteries have a really strong central setting that like ties everything together. So that helped a lot.